Hi, I'm Gerard Saylor from the Elgin Fargo Public Library, beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin. You know, I, I didn't say it was a good idea. It doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad idea. Uh, anyway, right now I'm on the roof of the library. That background noise you hear is an air conditioning unit about 10 yards to the back and the right. And I've got a, a, a double video here for you. I have a book to recommend and I also have some boxes to open. So, this is actually a new knife I got. A, uh, Spyderco with a bunch of lint stuck in the locking mechanism. Goodness gracious, look at that. Anyway, it, it's a new knife. It's a Spyderco JD Smith Sprint Run. This is a big box with probably just one or two items in it. Let's see. Go Tree, leave this town. I have no idea what that guy is. And the Wiggles Go Bananas with uh, the new yellow guy. Blue guy. One of the guys had a chronic disease and quit the group. Uh, up next here is large print, probably. Uh, yeah, a bunch of large print. Knockout by Coulter, a rogue of my own. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Uh, basically, a bunch of chick books, except for Killer Summer by Ridley Pearson and Devil's Punch Bowl by Greg Isles. All right. It's not the boxes. It's actually a book I tried to do a video before, and I did it down in the basement. And the sound down there was absolutely horrible in this bad light. And so instead, I'm actually up on the roof where there's plenty of light and still bad sound because there's a air conditioning unit on the roof about 10 yards to the back and the right that's giving off a bunch of background noise. Anyway, the book here I have is uh, Tom Piccarelli's The Coldest Mile. The Coldest Mile? The sequel to The Cold Spot, which I plugged once before in these little video things. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Piccarelli is a genius. I, you know, I, I don't want to label him that kind of way, but uh, pretty much all the indications point to yes. Yes, he is. Especially this one, and especially in the crime genre. Uh, this is a sequel to uh, the previous book, Coldest Mile, or The Cold Spot, which is about Chase, who uh, from the age he was 8 years old to about 18, he was raised by a sociopathic professional criminal grandfather. And Cold Spot refers to that spot deep inside himself where he, he, he packs away all his emotions and, and, and feelings and basically his whole human personality. But he needs to recover that cold spot when uh, he broke away from his grandfather when he was 18, ended up marrying a, a deputy sheriff, and his deputy sheriff wife is murdered during a jewelry robbery. And he has to bring that cold spot back on his quest for revenge in which he also enrolls his grandfather to help him out. Well, at the end of that, Chase is pretty broken down, suicidal, uh, damaged from a couple gunshot wounds, and this begins, uh, coldest mile begins right where coldest spot ended. Uh, Chase is kind of recovering a bit. His grandfather has taken off with the chase, the money had to, the money that Chase had to pay him, the grandfather to actually help out some ransom. And uh, Chase, who uh, was raised up really to be a getaway driver, he's a, he's a supremo getaway driver. He takes a job with a low-rank crime family in New Jersey to earn some money, ends up stealing some money from them, takes off down to Florida, where he really wants to be, to rescue his two-year-old niece. His grandfather, Jonah, had uh, a girlfriend who he killed in the previous book, murdered. Well, kind of in self-defense. And they had a daughter together who was staying with the girlfriend's sister. And so Chase wants to get down there and rescue this girl away from the sociopathic grandfather who he knows is going to go down there and get her so he can save her from the fate that he had growing up. And so he ends up getting down there. He finds out that the girl is missing. And uh, she ended up going missing and the rest of the family was murdered, including a five-year-old boy and stuck in a swamp uh, down there in Florida. And at the same time, Chase is also trying to contact his grandfather. He can't get it to him through the usual channels, and so he kind of goes into the Orlando, Florida underground. Uh, crime family is kind of moving around to try to contact his, his grandfather. And, and the whole time, uh, Chase has always been the, the utmost professional as a crook. But now he's, he's suicidal. He's uh, really depressed. He's really worried about his, his two-year-old niece. And he's really mourning his wife and the fact that his wife and he were never able to conceive a child. And so he kind of looks at his niece that way as an opportunity to kind of get that back as something that he never had, and something he lost. And so the, the real thing here is, is all about Chase. Uh, as a character, he's a really interesting fella. And, and the real true meat of the plot, though, is just... Uh, 
Piccarelli's introduction to, to the world that Chase lives in. There's a lot of little detail, a lot of great little characters, and it's, it's this introduction of the crime world of Chase and Jonah. And uh, to read my notes here that I wrote after I read it, uh, Chase learned from the best professional thieves, con men, and kills around. He thinks and acts like a crook, and Piccarelli gives a first-person view of it all. You meet the ruthless pros, the wannabes, the hopped-up drug dealers, the skanky whores, the would-be tough guy pimps. Piccarelli is brilliant in bringing that underworld setting to vivid and dangerous life. And uh, that really goes for the first one, too. You can read them both together. They're pretty quick reads and really fantastic crime novels. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of unpleasantness there, you know, if you don't like a lot of shooting. You know, just generally bad people. And uh, the fact that Chase has, has worked his way out of that and then he's forced to go right back into it again and uh, deal with real scumbags. And uh, at the end, there's a real good chance that there's going to be a third one in the series, assuming the publisher will pick it up. Uh, anyway, I'm Gerard Saylor, uh, LB Fargo Public Library, beautiful downtown Lake Hills, Wisconsin, and I'm up on the roof.